everyone. Thank you very much, David, and BNH for having me. I'm excited to be here and to be in New York and joining you guys all here live. So um, I hope you, yes. Oh, I'm going to use this remote. Thank you. OK, wonderful. Can we change the screen, please? There we go. This is my world. I am a professional surf photographer, as David was saying, uh, Lex, our elite ambassador, as well as a Canon Explorer of Light. And I've been so very fortunate to shoot for Surfer Magazine as a senior staff photographer when they're around for eight years traveling the globe with some of the best surfers in the world. Um, as you can see, this is how I create. I'm in the water swimming with just fins and a water housing and a camera. So it's not on a surfboard. I'm not on a boat or anything like that. I am in the water shooting these moments. I'm going to share a little bit of what I do, how I create it, and giving you guys a few tips, not only on business, but as well as on shooting. This is my world, and this is my office. And this kind of shows you the magnitude and the kind of like extremes that I go to in order to create my images. This gives you a little more retrospect. As you can see, this is a massive wave. This is during the eddy, which is ran only when the waves are 20 feet, which equates to about a 40 to 50 foot face wave. And I'm in the bottom corner there by the lower ski in a red vest, about to take a massive breath of air before I dive underneath this wave. And there was no time for the jet skis to grab me at this moment, because I was swimming shooting. And I had to just dive under. One of the scariest moments of my life, definitely something that I won't forget of just being in the water and shooting these moments and being there and being calm and collected. This was in 2016. And at the time, I was using a Canon ADD. You know, you'd think, well, why are the ADD in the water at the moment? I mean, I had a 1DX Mark II at the time. The ADD had the built-in Wi-Fi. I was sending photos from my camera to my phone in the water that was also in a case and able to transmit them like seamlessly within minutes after these moments, giving us almost a real time kind of like moments, play by play, from the water. And it was going to the social media of the different like sponsors of the event, giving us real time moments. This is an image of mine that has been seen around the world. And this is a European um, National Geographic cover. But it's been used in many different ways. And this, to me, I call this the wave of change. And this is something so special to me, to be able to create an image of something I love so very much, the ocean, and it to really incite change. And I think that's why we capture these images. I mean, when you guys look through your portfolios or what you shoot, you see what you truly love, what you truly care about, and, and what you want to always be around, and what, what makes you happy to be able to create. And to me, it's the ocean. And so being able to have an image like this that incites that change and really inspires others to keep our ocean clean is, is truly a dream come true. This, this is almost 10 years old. And to this day, I still get requests and asks to use this image in various campaigns and different things. Some more images of Pipeline. This is my office. This is Pipeline. This is shot with a 50 millimeter lens. What I want to tell you guys is you don't always have to shoot with the normal or the standard lens for different moments. And that's such a misconception of you having to shoot you know, uh, 85 for your portraits or this or that. This is a 50 millimeter in the water at Pipeline where most people would be shooting with a fisheye. What I found was I could make the wave look a lot wider and larger of what it truly was without distorting it in that way. And people were like, why are you swimming so close with a 50? Because I can, because I want to, because I had a shot in mind. And that's the beauty of photography, is being able to concept it and craft it, and then being able to create it. Another one of my images, this is shot down in Tahiti and was for Surfer Magazine, was one of their photos of the year. And it's, again, this is with a fisheye. I should be sitting much closer with the thing. It's very unorthodox to be sitting so far away. But what I found was, I saw the rainbow, I saw the moment, and by moving myself backwards, I could still shoot this with the fisheye and get the entire wave in frame in this moment. Let's get into a little bit of underwater photography. And we're also going to talk a little bit about like cinematography and shooting. And so I've been shooting a lot with the Canon R5. And it has opened the doors for me personally, and I know a lot of cameras nowadays, with the option of shooting video right at your fingertip with the flip of a switch. 
And to me, that has opened a whole new world for me to be able to shoot video and photos. And this one, I'm using the animal eye tracking. <laughs> Worked perfectly. This is with a 24 millimeter at 1.4. A lot of my imagery, and I'll show you and point out to you, I like to shoot it wide open. I'm able to get these moments harder to focus. Yes, I mean, with the technology, it almost feels cheating sometimes with the eye focus. But I'm able to separate the background a lot more. I'm able to give this almost a portrait effect while in the water there, which is a very different and unusual image. Same turtle, 24 millimeter, but you're seeing that separation shooting it at 1.4. I'm able to separate the background and give it that like 3D look, give it, give it just a little enhancement, but it draws the, the viewer's eye right to the subject. And a lot of times, I mean, I'm using a lot of like NDs and polarizers and different things in those situations where they make sense in order to be able to shoot wide open in this way. Some dolphins, this is with a 11 to 24 millimeter. A lot of these are free diving. A lot of these, I'm swimming underwater, taking a breath as these moments kind of come up. You can go with scuba, but it comes a lot more clunky. It becomes a lot more gear, and you're not as fluid in the water sometimes to be able to capture imagery like this. Some fish. I just go, let's talk a little bit about gear here. Yes, these are my essential items, including my dog that I love, and so these are my items. You know, let's start with my camera. I'm using the Canon R5, as well as a R3 now in the water, and really loving those. I mean, with those eye focus and being able to shoot 4K 120, that is my go-to in the water. Lenses, it varies. These housings, which we'll get to, can accommodate a variety of different lenses. I'm using a lot of primes, 50, the 85, 24, um, and the 15 to 35 all RF glass, as well as you can see the 600 on there. It's an F11. And believe it or not, I mean, it's a great price, weight, and size. It's um, a great go-to for me to be able to travel with that and have a lighter option for a very long telephoto lens. The water housing. This is made by Aquatech. They actually have these at B&H, and we did a custom exclusive for B&H this past year with the water housing. It accommodates most every camera, they have ones for mirrorless cameras. Um, you don't lose function. That's the beauty of it. You, you can't go into the water and just set your settings and then hope everything's gonna stay the same. So I'm going in there and I'm having full control. I can switch from photo to video, back again with a flip of a switch and have all that, as well as my camera bag, which is also at B&H there that I designed with Ruka. So let's talk a little bit about my Memory card, we also have one for, um, this is with Lexar, and they just released the fastest CF Express card available right now, it's the Diamond Series. Um, very fast, and that's something that's so important to me because if I am shooting in the water and I need to be able to switch from photo to video, I can't have any lag. A lot of time these video files are three, four gigabytes when they're 4K 120, massive files. And so it's something that I love to be able to switch from photo to video and back again instantly. I'm gonna show you guys a quick little video that I shot here just with some of my clips that I um, recently captured and put together a little edit, it's just a minute. Um, hope you guys enjoy, if we can play that, please. I think there's audio if we have, please.
it gives you just a little perspective of like some video and that's all shot with the R5. And being able to capture those type of imagery in the water, it's critical to have a fast card in those moments. Here's the housing. This is the exclusive one to B&H. It houses the R5 as well as the R6. Housing, you can see it's just latches, but here you can see all of the buttons on the back. And I'll just go back there. You can see you can turn on and off, flip the switch, anything that you need, every kind of function that you have, and the front is interchangeable with the different lenses. You get another perspective of it right there in the water. So let's talk a little bit about over-under. This is a very popular type of shooting in the water. This is a very popular, and I, I know Keith touched on it yesterday, showing us how he shot uh, in his fish tank and putting it in the water. I'm gonna show you a little bit of shooting with uh, housing and an over-under port. So water clarity is a big factor. Um, obviously, you need to have clear water if you go in to the Hudson and it's not very clear, you're not gonna get an over-under shot. So composition, you wanna balance the water line. A very important thing I always kind of remember in these moments, whenever you're kind of shooting, is shoot loose and edit tight. And that's such an important thing because in the moment, I mean, with massive cards, I'm shooting with 512 gigabyte Lexar cards, 256, it's, it's like shoot a ton in that moment and then when you're down to editing it, then that's where you kind of call and you, you get your imagery that you guys need versus taking one or two shots and hoping you got it and now the person has blinked in that moment or it wasn't the right composition or, or moment that you want. So try to remember that. It's just shoot a ton in that moment because especially in this, the water line is gonna be changing constantly. So you kind of want to be able to have that. Um, focus points are very important here. I use focus points in this type of shooting for over-under. And the reason for that is I want to have absolute control where my focus is. And it is for, you know, if there's a subject above water, it's above water. Or if the subject is below in this photo behind, I know it's exactly on the subject in that way. Um, a high aperture helps. A high aperture is going to allow you to get more depth of field. This is going to allow you to get more focus above. When you're shooting below, you're getting a little magnification. And when you're doing that, you're going to be getting um, a blurry on the top. So giving yourself a higher aperture here is going to give you a greater detail. So I'll show you a little bit. This is from Tahiti. And again, shooting a ton of photos. As these moments are going by, you're then going to cherry pick and find that exact one that you like and that exact moment that works for you. Here you can see, this is me shooting with it. You can see it's quite large. This was with the 1DX Mark III in the housing there. And this shows you, I'm shooting with an 11 to 24 millimeter lens. This is in the Maldives. And you see how I'm just kind of dipping the lens halfway into the water. Um, creates a beautiful effect. And you can go even much larger. This is the very large one that they made from Aquatech. It pushes the water a little bit further away, giving you a cleaner, and finer line and give you a few of those. So a lot of water moving and again, sequences. This swimmer is coming very quickly at me. I'm shooting these, I'm finding that one moment there, just kind of composing the water. I'm looking at the back of the screen. I'm able to kind of figure and compose my shot above and below the surface of the water. This is in Kona on the Big Island. And again, you can shoot it in any which way type and form of this way from the side, and clear water helps. A little bit of sharks and, and water. It's not always just beautiful swimming and, and moments like this. This is kind of ominous in the way, and, and this was actually in Waikiki, and there was a big school of fish, and these sharks kept coming in, but they were so well fed. I was like, okay, it's gonna be okay to go swim with them. You know, and, and so I, I got my gear and went out there, but because it was so early morning, the shadows were very harsh, as you can see where the fish are. And so what I did for my exposure here, and as you guys do, preparation is key, right? You know, there's preparation to even get into the water. But in this moment, I knew that I needed to make sure when the shark appeared in the sun, I had my exposure correct, so I didn't underexpose it or overexpose it. So I had test shots before. Okay, I'm going to hope he's coming there, and I'm going to stay in this area where, like, the light is so I can get him just in that way and then just getting him right on there. But I don't lose my highlights. I don't lose the detail within the shark or the subject. And this goes for any subject that you're shooting. This goes for whatever you want to shoot. Do your test shots. Again, the beauty of digital. 
Do some test shots, test it, and make sure that you have your right exposure for this. This goes for anything shooting high speed or action or sunsets or anything like that. You want to be able to make sure that you have the right exposure before that moment happens because that is where preparation meets opportunity. I'm gonna show you a little bit of fish and some fun under the water of some different types of shooting. So this is with a wider lens and this is a massive school of fish as you had seen with the sharks. Shooting this, I shot this with a 50 millimeter, which is such a different lens to shoot in the water or underwater especially. And again, go unorthodox and finding those moments. I actually use the animal eye tracking again here on the R5 and shooting this school of fish and shooting it. And then I shot so many, they were everywhere. I was like, okay, how do I change and make this different? So I was like, what if we went to like a 13th of a second holding through? I was like, okay, let's try it one more time. And I then took it to a third. These are the fish, and I thought I had dust spots on my sensor. It was a fish's eyes when I looked at it across the whole thing. I was like almost about to go Photoshop it out and clean it up on the file, and I looked and I was like, oh, that's actually fish's eyes, which is incredible. A lot of these times with these ones, I was panning with the subject. So again, like if you do a slow shutter or thing, this is at a 13th of a second, this is at a third of a second. Let's talk about a little bit about working with a client as you do and where you kind of go and some little tips. So concept and vision, work alongside the client to understand their vision. This is so important, you guys. This, you wanna make sure this is their, this can be your vision, but it's their needs. So if you're just taking it and doing it yourself, you're not delivering what they had in their mind. Your job is to take what they need and enhance it and put your touch. That's why they came to you and hired you in these moments. Scouting, know your waters. This goes for anything you're shooting. You need to know where you're shooting or what you're shooting. If you're gonna go shoot a building down here and you wanted a certain light or something, or you just go, what if you went and it's backlit? Or it's, but that's because you wanna go scout. You wanna know where the light is coming from. You wanna know what the traffic's doing at that time, just as you do for water. Pricing, I call it a three-tier system, and this is something my father taught me. And there's three tiers, so if they come in, they're like, you know, what's your price? You wanna have that one tier that's like, you wanna have that one price in the middle where you're like, yeah, this is, you know, what I want. You wanna have one, the lowest one, where you say, not a dollar under, I'm walking away if they go, I said 100 bucks, if they go 99, I'm walking away. And you wanna have the one that you're running out of your bed, running down to go shoot, and you're excited to go do. Have your three pricing tier, and try to get them in the, into that area, and work with them. Communication is key, guys. Communication can make or break it. With working with clients, working with big campaigns, or anything that you do, it, it's about your communication. Yes, your talent is, 50, 60% about it, but your communication and your networking and how you work with the client can be just as strong and just as powerful as your talent. Deliverables, make sure you know what they need so you're not delivering too small of a file, too big of a file, or what they need or how they need their ratio. How are you gonna be shooting it? If you shot everything dead center and they're like, oh, we need it offset to the right or we need it offset to the left, clear these things ahead of time in order to get the best results and get them coming back to you. I'm gonna show you, this is not my images. This is what a client sent me as a brief. And so this is what I received as a mood board to show me what they needed, and then I'm gonna show you what I created from looking at these images. So these were pulled from the internet, from all over, and they're like, this is what we need. So I'm gonna just give you a small sample of what I then shot. This is what I shot. So this is all about the goggle for Aquasphere. And I knew that I needed to focus on the goggles, a special gold goggle, and have those details. I shot this with a 24 to 105 underwater. And getting my focus, I knew that I needed the subject tack sharp and in there. And this ended up being on the packaging for them globally and what they needed. I shot this 10 times, him going back and forth. I have hundreds of images like this, and I picked this one image. Again, shoot loose and edit tight. There's no reason you shouldn't be having a ton and then cherry picking your best hero shot for anything. Again, from the client, this is what we need. We want them in kind of a dark cave. It's an ominous photo. We want to kind of just highlight the goggles and make it very intense. Okay. We can do that. 
And this is what I came, this is three, this is the same person, but I'm showing you how I shot multiple photos. First one, bubbles in the eyes. Great, that doesn't work, doesn't highlight the mask. Second one, mask is okay, there's still one bubble, probably could be photoshopped out. Third one, that's the one. You can see that there's a slight tint, and that's the one that they wanna use because they can see that there's a reflection in the goggle. Shoot loose. And here's one of the, another image from that moment, just kind of showing. And I'm gonna show you. And this is, so now let's get into detail shots. This is with a 50 millimeter underwater. So they needed detail shots of the knife for Aqualung, and they wanted to show it in that way. If I shot it with a wide angle, shoot everything underwater or everything with the same lens, you're gonna get the same results. But I needed those detail shots, and so being able to shoot with a different lens and a different function and away, that's how you're able to get results like this, over the shoulder with the 50 millimeter again, and being able to show detail. Let's talk a little bit about like natural light. So this is not with a flash. This is finding, again, those moments of light. We chase light, we love light, we explore light. That, that's what we do as photographers and creators. We wanna be able to find those best moments of light. And this was a cave slightly behind her, and the light was just coming over the mountain and right onto her. And to me, that's what I love because it separates it, it gives it a little more dramatics and shows you a little bit more. So again, you can see how dark behind it is and it's like separated. This is all natural light. So using that and being able to kind of shoot it in that way, it adds a little more dramatic dra drama to the photo. But let's talk about using some light. So you have Michael Phelps here on the right, a campaign I shot, and my assistant is setting up lights on the bottom of the pool. And the shot was supposed to be above the pool like this. Him above the surface is a ninja goggles and this was something stealthy and tech. This is what they wanted as an ad campaign. This was the creative. This is what they wanted. We got it. Perfect. Done. Between takes, Michael kept slipping underwater to take a break. When he'd go, I'm a photographer. I'm going to shoot everything, right? Slipped underneath and I shot some photos. I looked and went, holy cow, that's really cool. Here's a lesson. Whatever you're shooting, models, anything like that, show them the photo. If you don't show them the photo, they don't know what you're seeing until later and then it might be different. I showed Michael the photo, it changed his entire demeanor and he wanted to just shoot those for a while. Giving us these type of images on the right. And it's those type of moments, this is my favorite photos of him and it was his favorite photos as well, but he couldn't see what I was seeing. And so that's why showing your subject what you're seeing or how the light is interacting on your subject is key and can change their demeanor, change the moment, and change what you're able to capture. Again, some moments underwater there. And thank you. That's all we have for today. I really appreciate it. Thank you.